Hi guys, so we're here just down in the room which I showed you briefly with the circuits in. Um, the miner's just hanging out over there, you can see it there. Um, and we have this computer here which is the control computer for the miner itself. Um, basically, I'll just quickly explain what happens. This here controls that miner and that miner alone. Up here in this tower, we have another computer, which is sort of like our... It's, it's a control computer. It has more than one ability. Uh, if I just type help here, it, as you can see, it says harvest will give you flax, wheat will give you wheat. Uh, yeah, it disappeared, obviously. But So, it has multiple ones. Now, this is how you actually get it to work. There's a command called dig on here, which then tells that computer to dig. Uh, mm. the, the code is set up to only function like that, but when we put the code on pastebin for you guys, we'll delete all the other bits. So, the only bit that that control machine will have actually is the dig command. If you want to add more to control a turtle for harvesting, which I'm sure we'll showcase in another episode or whatever, then you can do. Um, you know, it'll be very easy to add bits of it. It's not complicated once you understand how it works. But basically, what that one does, when you put the dig command in, it'll ask you for a width and a length. And that's basically how many holes do you want it to dig in a row and how many rows do you want it to dig. Am I right there, yeah. Danny? That's yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And it's going to look rather confusing on here because we have to just enter them before the program's running. Yeah. Um, so then it'll send the signal, obviously, to this computer, and this computer will then handle it, leaving that computer up there free to be used to issue other commands. Because the problem we had when we were running it on there initially was we set it off digging, and then if we wanted to harvest wheat, for example, we couldn't because that computer was locked up running this program. So Danny put a nice bit of code in to make it work independently on a separate machine. So without any further ado, here is the code. Now there's a program running here called Handler and Handler is basically what you need to have running on this machine so that it will listen for the control computer sending it a message to tell it to go, I believe is... that's all Handler does isn't it? That's just yeah. Right, so if you hold control and press T and then hold T for a little bit, it'll terminate it like you can see there. So basically, when you do the command on the control computer, Handler hears that and Handler will run this dig here. So if I just type edit dig, it comes up. Now, the first bit we need to explain so that everybody knows how to use this is all these variables. Now we're going to explain the variables first and then we'll go on to explain how the code works. So if any of you are just wanting to use it and aren't really bothered how the code itself actually works, you just want to use it, then this bit will explain it to you. So the first thing to know is there is a wireless transmitter directly behind it and there's also this, uh, I forgot what they're called now, the things on the side. Yeah, wireless modem. Wireless modems, that's the ones. So and that's on the left. That's what receives the signal from the control computer and this is what the machine interacts with to transmit the signal to the miner basically. Yeah. So basically variables move amount is basically the width of your mining head. So it's 9 because obviously it's a 9 by 9 but if you've decided you want to actually put 11 on it or you only want to put 7 on it then obviously you change that to 11 or you change that to 7. Now this current height will be wrong because that's from... How have you managed to shut that door, Danny? I really don't know. <sighs> For God's sake. I'll just casually mine through the wall, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that was different. Anyway, yeah. Um, so that height, basically, what you do is you come up to the miner and you just place a block on the block breaker and then you come and stand on it and you can see um, on the minimap oh, it's disappeared no, it disappears either way I can't really point at it 
Wait, actually, can I hold? No, I, uh, there's no way I can. Oh yeah, there you go. So it's this here in the brackets. It's this 88 in the brackets. So basically, you come and you do that, and that will tell you the current height of the machine uh, in terms of what the code's wanting to know. Um, so basically, it's currently at 88, so I'll just put 88 in there. Now, here you can see there's North Freak, South, uh, North Freak, East Freak, South Freak, and West Freak. And they're obviously the frequencies, which in this case relate to the, for example, CD Plat West M is 1014, and you can see on here, 1014. So that's just so that the machine knows what frequencies to transmit. So obviously then there's the up frequency and the down frequency, there's the arm down, well, down arm, up arm, and east arm, west arm. And then dig is the receiver that's connected up to the block breakers at the bottom. So basically that is all the information you have to put in depending on what you've set the frequencies to. And that's just so that, uh, the reason we've done this is so they're at the top so it's easier to change them basically. Mm -hmm. So um, that more or less covers what you need to know to work this code. If you set all that up correctly, um, Danny's just making a quick change there, but if you set all that up correctly, then when you come up to this control terminal up here, you can see there's, again, a program running. If I just terminate it, this one's actually start up, so I'll edit start up. Um, and ignoring the flax ID, wheat ID, melon ID, and restock ID, because they're all turtles, this dig ID here relates to the ID of the turtle. Of the uh, uh, computer of, yeah. down there. Yeah, sorry, of the computer. So these four are turtles, which won't do anything, and we'll take those out of the code before we send you it. But this dig ID here is the ID of the computer, so you will have to change that to whatever ID the computer gets assigned. Um, and basically, this coding's all kind of complicated and not relevant so I'll just exit that now uh, if you just control hold, hold control and R here it'll restart and because it's the startup script it automatically comes on we should mention how to work out the computer IDs I think uh, yeah well that's what I was gonna do I'll just demonstrate it on this so do you want to demonstrate this Danny yep uh, well the basic way is to just type ID and press enter oh wait no oh. ID there we go and it's case sensitive and you can see that it says this is computer number 35 and it's labeled control um, and yeah obviously you have to do that on the computer with the yeah. big program on. obviously if we went downstairs to the computer I was just showing you and did it then it would say number 11 and I believe it's called minor the computer for anyone who's interested but obviously that'll be different on yours uh, if you want to know how to label it it's just label space set space whatever you want to call it and you have to label it if you want to be able to break the computer and move it if if this wasn't labeled and we broke it it'd lose all the codes on it wouldn't it yep so it's it deleted yeah it's very important that you label it if you want to keep the codes um so with that in mind i'll just restart it right there we go so if we type dig and it is case sensitive you do need the capital d it then asks for your width, which basically is how many holes across do you want it to go? So, um, I'm not actually planning on sending this, but we'll put two, and then you press enter, and it says length, which is how many rows you want. So if you wanted two rows, you'd put two, then you'd press enter again, and it would send the various pieces of information down to the machine downstairs to get it running. But as we don't want it to run yet, I'm just going to terminate that and restart it. So it won't have actually sent anything now. It won't. It wouldn't have anyway. You could have followed that up. It's not actually running at all. The handle. Oh yeah, good point. Handle is not downstairs listening, so that doesn't matter. But yeah, either way. So that is basically how you use it. So for anyone who's just watching this video to know how to work the code and use it, that's pretty much all you need to know. You put this code on here, and you put the other code on your control computer, wherever that may be. Uh, you can put them right next to each other if you really want to. Um, 
and that basically will work at that. Uh, we'll delete all the unnecessary bits on it so it'll be as simple as it can possibly be to make life easier for everyone. So that's kind of that. So with that in mind, um, part two of this video is it's mostly going to be Danny speaking now basically explaining how the code works for anyone who's interested in learning the coding or just generally interested in how this particular code does what it um, is doing so I'll kind of sort of hand over to Danny obviously I'm still recording and I'm, I'll be flying around to show you the various bits but it'll be mostly Danny talking from now on so away you go Dan okay do so this off, I should mention what this line here does. It basically takes what you typed in here of the height and it minuses 5 from it <clears throat> and that's because basically the level of bedrock is down at 5 and you might as well stop the miner from mining any further down than bedrock. Uh, I'm just gonna go past this bit for now and go right down to the bottom because that's where it actually starts lots of green great the actual code starts here when you ran the script it would go from this line here right here at, at term.clear which basically these two lines this one and this one clears the screen and then sets the cursor's position to the top left it prints this line of text just says welcome to Danny Hobby's Minor then sets a couple of variables that I guess we could have put up in the top but it makes more sense to set them here because I then knew what they were when I was writing the functions so we then this is a little bit confusing um, this bit I can't how can I explain this um, it it sets t equal to the thing around the back, the this frequency transmitter that I'm jumping up and down on. Uh, just one second, I'll just show you that. So that's the thing I pointed out earlier, which is the peripheral it's interacting with. So whenever the computer refers to t, it basically means the transmitter on the back, and you can ask t to do certain things, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, this bit here is it then sets the variable width equal to again another bit of confusing code uh, the first argument that the programs passed in and then it sets length equal to the second arguments passed in you get these arguments by one sec roll up the million lines of code Uh, having this line right here at the top, T args. I don't know why you name it T args. It's just a commonly done thing. The only important bit is this bit here: the curly bracket, the three dots, and the close curly bracket. That's it. You can call it whatever you want, and it's basically an array, an array containing all of the base separated like strings after the word dig so if you were to type dig then the number 12 then the number 82 in t args 1 in the index 1 would be the first number and then in the second would be the second number so basically when the computer up the ladders out to this computer it runs the program dig and then it bolts on the width and the height, the width and the length, sorry, that you typed in. One sec while I scroll back down. We then basically convert the string, because it takes it in as a string, we convert it to a number, and we set the whole, ma whole <laughs> amount equal to the width times the length. That basically works out the total amount of holes that the quarry is going to dig. It's only really used for sort of messages that are shown to the user. We then print that it's digging so many holes, so if you typed in 5 for the width and 2 for the length, it'll tell you that it's digging 10 holes. 
pretty much then we call the next whole function which is right here and half of my comments don't fit on the screen great um, we start off by uh, creating a for loop for the whole amounts okay sorry I lied a little bit uh, we do use the whole amount it is quite essential uh, the for loop runs as many times as holes you want it to dig so if it was 25 this would be ran 25 times we set hole number to i so we can use it later on in other places for telling the user that it's like moving on to a certain hole we could add one to figure out that or just to tell it which hole we currently are in we then print that out but we don't reference hole number for some reason I could have done that I could have put hole number here could have put hole num right there and it would have done exactly the same function we then call the dig hole function uh, which is here and it's not all going to fit on the screen so I have to go for it step by step we start off by telling the user that we're digging down it would say hole 1 right here then we move the arm down which is another function we call the function and pass it the amount this variable right here hole size is back up at the top with the variables and it's set to the height minus 5 so it would dig down to bedrock pretty much providing you put in the right height obviously I'll go to those functions in a moment I'll just explain this one first do you think I should do it that way, that way Carl, or should uh, I go yeah that seems like a good idea explain what it's doing and then show each function that it's calling in turn then okay um, we then print that it's coming back up the hole then we call the function and pass the hole size again so it comes back up the right amount of times after that we check the current Y of the machine which is sort of the side to side di directions to make it as simple as possible we set the current Y to 1 if right this checks this if statement here is checking if the quarry has moved all the way to the right so if you put width of 5 it would check if this current Y is equal to 5 and we increment this we make we add one to this every time it's done digging a hole that's down here but I'll get to that if the miner is in the last position we set it back to one we then print that it's going to be moving back to the starting position so we print that it's moving west and it moves back the width of the hole minus one ta I don't really know how to explain that at all. Uh, can I, I can probably explain that one. Basically, if you picture that each hole is nine wide, and you're yep. doing a five by five quarry, for example, then each row is obviously in total 45 blocks wide. So if it mines down in the first position it's in, then on the second hole it's going to move nine blocks, third hole it's going to move another nine blocks, which is 18, then another 9 which is 27 and then on the 5th and final hole it's going to have moved one minute while my brain gets into gear 36 blocks so if the width is 5 and the move amount is 9 then it's going to be telling it to go back 45 blocks which would be 9 too many so you want to do width minus 1 so basically what that's saying is if the width is 5 take 1 away which is 4 then times it by the movement amount which is 9 which brings the total to 36 which is how many blocks east it will have moved by the time it's mined the last hole so it only has to go back 36 to be back in the original position because obviously it doesn't need to cross over the original hole to get back to it if that makes sense yeah so this bit of code here would do 4 times 9 to that just prints out the right amount and then we use the exact same math to Call the arm west function which would move the arm of the quarry back to the machine which is what I was trying to explain about the 36 yeah. when it's 45 wide thing yeah the hole that actually dug would be 45 wide yeah. 
but you don't want it to move all the way back over because then it would be too far. We'll we'll do a little sort of demonstration after yeah. we've explained all the code and hopefully that'll make more sense of what we mean by that. Right. This bit is only called if the length you enter is more than one. If it's not, then it's disregarded and it'll just stop after doing one line. If the length desired is more than one, then it does this, basically. Um, simple debugging, it just tells you that the quarry is moving basically north uh, to start a new line. I should probably have wrote row to keep it consistent, but line, row, same thing. Yeah, they both then, mean the same. We then call the function for the quarry to move to the north the move amount so it's going to move north nine times so it's in the correct position to dig another set of holes right now if the current y isn't equal to the width so if it isn't in the last position then we add one to the current y so if the current y is one on the first go it would be set to two this means one equals one plus one so it would actually set this to two that's a little bit confusing but yeah it, it just does uh, then we print out I can't see half of this we print that we're moving east so many moving east nine it would say moving east nine whole number two for example because it would set on the first go round of the code it would go current y is zero so we'll set it to one yeah because <laughs> down here we set current y to zero okay you can't see it all current y equals zero so on the first go round it's not in the last position so it will use the else statement it will say moving east nine whole number one because it'll have added one to the current y already then we move the arm east so many that's already after it's dug one hole so it'll dig a hole then check where the quarry needs to move to basically <coughs> uh, then it would come back down and do it again that's pretty much it is there much i've missed out i need to go back up to the other functions don't no I? there's nothing missed out on that so i'll just kind of sort of put that code in sort of human friendly terms basically what all that is doing in essence is saying i want a five by five hole so what it's saying is have i dug across five yet no yeah so i'm gonna move east to position myself for a new hole then i'm gonna dig down then i'm gonna come back up now have i dug all five Okay, now I have done. So now I need to go right back to where I started and move north 9 so that I'm on a fresh row again. And then it repeats it again. And it'll do that until it's dug the 5x5 five five that you asked for, at which point it'll go, okay, the length's at 5, the width's at 5, I'm done. And yep. then it'll stop because it has no more to do because it's done everything you've asked of it. But obviously it's calling, as Danny said, different functions to make it actually work, which is what he's going to show now. Yeah. Also, once it's basically done all of the holes, so if you put in two, two for the length, two, sorry, I'll start again. Five for the width and two for the length. So it's going to want to dig ten holes. Five and then move forward and then another five. It would then just fall out of the for loop, print done, and then it wouldn't be doing the next hole function anymore. So the program will just end. In that, in then the handler takes back over because dig no longer has priority. Anyway, that's a total other conversation. Um, I'll just scroll back up to the functions. Which one shall I go over first? Arm uh, down. Yeah, I was going to say you want to kind of go sort of with the arm down function, then the up. But basically, in the order you explained them, like in the order that it calls them, basically. Yeah, arm down. Uh, we start a for loop and it goes from 1 to the variable a which is what we pass in so down here in the code we call arm down and then oh god I pressed w great that was awesome <laughs> um, we called arm down whole size so it's going to go down uh, it's going to try and 
going to send <laughs> got the right words eventually it's going to send the variable hull size to to arm down here so it's going to go from one to however deep the hull needs to be we set this is where the T comes in we set the frequency of T so to access the things that T is able to do we need to put a dot we put dot and then set frequency and then down arm down arm is one of the variables which is at the top you saw them earlier so I'm not going to show you that, that that's the bit I explained the variables that is just one of the Frequencies. very large number yeah we then set the output of the back of the machine to true we sleep for 0.1 of a second and then we turn it off again that basically sends a redstone pulse if you were to do it any smaller Minecraft wouldn't register it as a redstone pulse and it wouldn't actually be sent through the transmitter so this is this amount of time is borderline if 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 you're on a really bad like server or something you might consider increasing that a little bit maybe to point two. then we sleep again for 1.5 seconds to allow the blocks to travel from the block breakers to the chest and just things to settle down wait, oh, wait no, no i'm wrong no, no that's I'm wrong. the wrong Sorry. bit that's wrong to wrong. allow that's to allow the frame motors to time actually to reset. yeah that but basically once you've used them they they kind of spin for a little bit before you can use them again so that's just to give the thing time to reset itself to completely still and calm and everything back in the proper position before it tries to ask the quarry to do something else. Yeah, pretty much. We then set the frequency again, we change it to dig, which is the frequency of the receiver for the block breakers. We set the output of the back to true, leap for 0.3 of a second, so it's a decent signal sent to the block breakers, then set the output to back of false so the, the signal gets scanned off after by three of a second then we sleep again just well we could probably get away with not sleeping here but it would be a bit sketchy so we yeah. just add a bit of a time gap there um, that's pretty much it and then yeah. do that the required amount of time for it to move down and then obviously it's the same layout for pretty much all of them the, Just, there is the one only, slight difference. Yeah. The only thing that changes mainly is the amount of time you have to wait after pulsing to allow the frame motors to reset back into the correct positions. And uh, I'll, I'll just kind of point out there, we can't really give you the answers to that because it depends on the situation. I mean, we're on a server, so it's quite laggy for us. You could probably get away with a bit less if you're on a single player with a very powerful computer you could get away with using less of a delay so really all you can do is play around with it and if it's not working just watch it watch the quarry and look and go right what actually is it missing out where is it falling down and just tweak the times a little bit um, there is one other change that you didn't actually uh, th yeah it says actually here yeah this is the bit you haven't explained yet isn't it yeah what the, the fact that the frequencies outside the for loop on all the other functions yeah because it, it's important to change it to the down arm and then change it to dig during the for loop otherwise we had this when we were making the code there was a bit of an issue that we totally forgot to reset the dig that was just constantly trying to pulse like one frequency and not yeah. Doing what we wanted it to at but all. Basically, when we originally made this, the block breakers were on a timer, but there's since become a sort of it's a bit of a bug where if you try and do the block breakers while it's moving down, it was crashing the server and it was bugging the machine out and breaking it, and it made a mess. So what we did was we added it in to the down arm function. We added in the function to make it dig, which is the second part. But because we're really clever, we forgot to change the set frequency to the down arm. We forgot to put that into the for loop. So what it was effectively doing was setting the frequency to down, moving down one, digging, and then digging, and then digging, and digging, and digging, and digging, and basically not moving down more than one block. 
Yeah, we had this line of code here outside the for loop, which works fine for all the others because you only actually ever using one frequency. Like for this one, set the frequency to up arm, start the for loop for the right amount of times, and then you pulse it, and it would be pulsing the same frequency all the time because the frequency on the transmitter behind it isn't going to change. Yeah. Because That's only using the one frequency. Once. All these functions only use one, but that one uses two, so it has to keep setting the frequency. But on all yeah. the other ones, it's actually better to have it outside the for loop because it's one less process for the server to have to handle, basically. Because yep. if, you, if, you're, if you're doing the for loop 90 times, and each time it's setting the frequency, then it's pulsing it, then it's turning the signal off, then it's setting the frequency again that's going to cause more processes than if you just set the frequency and then on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, until it's done. Mm -hmm. So for all the rest, it's better. But for that one, it wouldn't work if we did it in that format. As we found out when I stared at it for 20 minutes and then thought, why isn't it going down more than one block? <laughs> that you was better. awkward. <laughs> I was very tired, to be fair. It in my defense... Your, I wrote the code. <laughs> Well, no, I, I did change it. Bit. I did change it though, so I should have spotted. Oh, right. In my defence, though, I hadn't slept the night before. <laughs> that that's my that's my defence. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> All right, I, I'll, I'll leave this comment in here in case that's not clear enough as to how it works. We found roughly about three seconds is a decent delay for the main movements. So, not necessarily the arm or the go down. They'll vary from computer to server because yeah. it's a little bit finicky with the placing and the breaking of the frames yeah. and stuff like that so about three seconds seems to be decent but sometimes the uh, frame motor that's moving the machine doesn't actually get long enough sat next to the bat box to receive power for it to move it again if that's the case you'll be able to see that happening you just you just add a bit more time here like you change it to four seconds for example it wouldn't matter it's still bringing in a ridiculous amount of blocks per second I mean it's bringing 81 blocks every single time it breaks a layer um, just a couple of things I'd like to say on that note though the first thing to say is on the east and west arm functions and also the up and down arm um, you need less of a delay when it's extending than you do when it's retracting because when it's extending the deployer is placing it then it's moving down and it can do that a lot quicker than it can pull it in and block break it. Uh, as to why I'm not 100% sure it's something to do with the way the block breaker works but just take my word on that one you need to give it more of a delay when it's retracting it otherwise it won't work. I think we've got the same for the um, up and arm down anyway yeah, look. I believe it's 1.8 seconds we have a 1.5 second delay for arm down and then for arm up we have a 2 second delay so, so you can see there's a bit of a difference on it uh, we did try them the same and it didn't like it the, the two reasons behind that are a, there's actually a delay on the block breaker like when we built it the deployer and the frame motor get pulsed at the same time and that works but the block breaker and the frame motor have to be pulsed at a different time the block breaker has to be pulsed slightly after, after which means it takes a little longer to complete but to be honest it's still extremely fast even at that uh, and one other thing I would like to say for anyone who is using this code uh, please do comment and say what sort of times you found to be optimum um, if you're running single player, you know, indicate sort of what sort of spec machine you're on so that people of similar specs can kind of go, oh, well, that's similar to mine, so mine will probably work at about that. And if you're playing on a server, try and sort of find out and let us know what sort of, sort of tier of server it is, like how powerful it is. You know, is it a dedicated server? Is it a VPS? You know... Is it a local host server host off of someone's machine? And if so, what specs are their machine? That kind of thing. To try and sort of give people an idea of what kind of times they're expecting. Yeah. We, we'd like some more sp statistics because we don't really have many. I was going to say... our server, it's about 80... Well, obviously, 9... 80... Sorry, 81 blocks. However often we can move the arm down, divided by however long it takes to move the arm down so yeah. how many blocks you get a second but then you've got a 
hit her in the movement and stuff like that. So it's, yeah, yeah. It, it would be nice to get some sort of feedback on that because the only kind of tests we can do are on the server and on mine and Danny's individual computers, which are kind of pretty similar tier kind of machines. So there's not a lot of difference in there. So we can only really pull out sort of two different ones. Yeah. So it would be nice to have some sort of comparison of you know what sort of optimum speeds people can get it to, because I'm sure it could run a lot faster than ours does. But we're on a server with like well, this is sort of this is about well this is the quietest I've seen it in ages three people uh, six people online, but we're on average about twenty between fifteen and twenty players most of the time, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. So it's certainly quite server heavy. So. Um, that's pretty much it. Oh, are you trying to... No, I was just trying to think of anything that I hadn't mentioned, but I think that's about it. If there anything, if anyone wants us to explain it a bit more, we could easily do a follow-up video and I'll yeah. well, go into a bit more depth if the, needs be. That, that's how the quarry works. Um, the handle code we're not going to explain in this episode because it's kind of a whole different thing. The, uh, the handle code is a bit... It's more to do with how Red Networks really, isn't it, Dan? Yeah, rather than so, just general. Yeah, it's sort. It, it, yeah, it's kind of a. It's a, it's a different mod actually, isn't it, Red Net? That's added in by Miss Peripherals, isn't it? No, it's. Just, oh, is it still part of just basic yeah, yeah. computer craft? Yeah. But anyway, it's a whole other area of it. So we'll do that separately if people want a Red Net tutorial. But the final thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to run Handler when I can spell it right. So you can see it's saying waiting there. Wait, Cal. We'll we'll show the test, but we'll not send it all the way down because oh, right, we don't yeah. want it to destroy like our house. Oh yeah, it is next to the house. So what we're doing here is we're just gonna change the current height to make it think it's lower down than it actually is, so it won't mine down as many blocks. Um, uh, we'll set it to seven and then it'll go three because it's gonna minus five from that. Yeah. Yeah, seven should be a, a safe-ish number. It'll only mine down a couple of blocks there. Right, so if we just run... Ha oh. <laughs> I'll let you do that part. There you so, go. that machine down there is waiting. So, if I now come up to here... So, this is the controller one. So, you can see the quarry's right there. It's, sat, it's not doing anything. So, what service do you require? I would like the service dig, please. Width, well, we'll go for two. And length, again, we'll go for two. And now in theory, there you go, you can see it's gone down. It's come back up. It's come back up again, because I missed one of the going downs. And now it's moving east. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, there are a bit of a visual, like a couple of visual bugs on it. Um... That's Not just a lot. frames in general, yeah, uh, distance. That's... So there you go, and it's back up, so now it's going... Oh. Oh, hang on, why is it... That's different. Um. Oh, I think I might have sent it the wrong width. The hell? You just got creepers. <laughs> okay. So you can see now it's retracting back to the west. Um, I'm not sure why it did three holes. I don't know if I pressed three or if there's a slight error in the code. But um, we'll look into it and we'll figure it out. If it's an error in the code, we'll fix it before we post it. But as you can see now, the whole thing's... M Didn't move back enough. <laughs> what the hell? Um. Okay, that so is. Pause here and yeah, try and uh, yeah, it and yeah. Come back. Yeah, we shall be back shortly when we know what the hell just happened. All right then. So we've ironed out a few little issues with the code, which kind of explain why the hell it was doing what it was doing. So we're gonna demo the two by two again. Uh. Yeah. Okay, oh. Do you set handler running? Yep. Wait. Hopefully this uh, will all work. And I think Danny just lost the connection. I got an connection. internal server error. I, yeah. So, as you can see, it's just mined down, and now it's on its east movement. 
So in theory, it'll move east. There we go, it's moving east. And east. And then it'll go down, hopefully. There we go, down, and down, and up, and up. And then it'll go back west. Yeah, we, we had to tweak some of the timings a little bit, um, among other things. Yeah, you, 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 so pulses were being sent basically before the stuff on it was ready. Yeah, you, you might need to do a bit of tweaking of your own, like, to get everything bang on perfect, but it should in theory work now. All been good. So now it's moving itself north. To dig the next line of holes. Okay then. Kind of fun to ride, but you just sort of derp around. Kind of like the sheep's doing in the left of my screen. Oh, it stopped. Oh. Anyway, there we go. So it's digging down the third hole now, and it would say that it was digging down the third hole on the computer if we could see it, but we can't, so we don't know that, but take my word for it. I'm an honest guy. So now it's coming east again as though it's going to go mine no hole two, which it is, just not a particularly big hole. Obviously, if you had the hole size to, like... If you set the current height to like 80 something or whatever it was, it then would. it'd go smash itself into the floor and all work. So now it's going to retract back to the west again. In theory. Yeah, it just takes a while. Yeah. Looked like it lagged a bit there, maybe missed one, I don't know. Should be alright. So it'll be nicely reset back into the westmost position where it should be. So it'll be all compact, back to full size, ready to start again. And then, you'll now notice it also, even though it's only supposed to be doing two rows, is in fact moving north. And the reason for that is, if it had mined, it would in fact be floating over a hole there. So there'd be no point in it being there anymore. So, Danny just made a nice little tweak, which means now, it will always go no no 9 north, right at the end. So it'll be positioned directly above where the next hole would be if it was to mine another row. Yep. Which means that now you could go, okay, blah 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 blah, half an hour later, oh, okay, I need to set the miner off and do some more. And it'll be in the place, so all you need to do is come along and go dig, 5x5, five five, and off it goes again. So that is pretty much it. Um, there's not a lot else to show you about that. Uh, so we'll put the codes on Pastebin and the links in the description. Uh, like I say, comment with your various uh, kind of timers and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. So that'd be nice. Uh, subscribe to us so you can see more videos by us. We've got some we, more things planned. Yeah, we will be. We've got a plan to make this better. We've made previous versions and worked on them to get to this. Yeah. And the, we have ideas planned. Yeah, to make the, it this this, qu so. this quarry is what we would class as the Mark III, um, being the third version, obviously. Danny made the original version on his own, then I helped make the second version, and subsequently this third version here. We have plans for fourth and possibly even fifth versions, which we'll show you later on. But the next kind of... Uh, I'll not really call it an episode, because it's not a series per se, but the next video that we upload will be a red power sorting machine, which... The main function of which is that the end chest on the quarry feeds into it. So, obviously, for anyone who's kind of thinking, okay, I've got a quarry, I've got it automated, and now I'm just getting chest after chest after chest full of crap piled in any old order, this machine could well be for you. So, hopefully you'll want to check that out. 
So comment, rate, subscribe, and see you in another video. See you later.